let's begin to put all of this uh, shear stress model stuff into real application, at least numerically. And so we'll go all the way through a tau equal VQ over ID calculation for this rectangular cross section that we have here. We're going to do actually a couple of things. The problem statement asks us to find the shear stress at a single point, point B, and then define the distribution across the entire cross section, which means there's actually a lot more going on. Uh, the, the concept's easy, but, but there's a lot more going on that we're going to pull out when we look at the two cross sections that you have, a rectangle one and a T. We'll do the rectangle one right now. <clears throat> okay, so we're given that the shear force in the beam found through other means is 50 kips. And we're going to find that first the shear stress at this point B, which has been identified for us as an inch down from the top of a rectangular cross section that is four inches by six inches. Now we do need to make an assumption here. Nothing in the problem statement tells us the direction of, of uh, the shear force here. If this is a typical beam, right, this is a cross section coming out at you, then the loading is probably in a vertical plane, meaning the bending is about then a horizontal plane. Right, so I'll draw it on here and then I'm gonna erase it because it'll get in the way. That means the shear force is vertical on that cross section as shown. And although a transverse doesn't mean perpendicular to this xx axis, it might as well. It really means it's transverse to the longitudinal axis that's coming out at you, right, in and out of the board. And that's what it really means, but or parallel to this plane that we have here. So I want to get rid of that because it's in the way. All right now, on this item, we know exactly where the neutral axis is. It's at the geometric centroid. Well, that's always going to be true for elastic behavior, but here we have a symmetric cross section, so we know it's at the mid height of this overall cross section, right? So from there to there, in this only just the symmetric case. And we're looking at point B, so the area that we want to deal with goes through that point B parallel to our bending axis. And we're looking at then the first moment associated with that area right there. That's going to be the capital Q that we got to work with, right? So there's a bunch of pieces here. Right, the model is tau equal VQ over IB. So there's a variety of things that we need to go calculate. Let's first find our second moment of area. That would be with again with respect to the xx axis by assumption. And so IXX would be equal, it's a rectangle here, so 112 of the base times the height cubed. So that's 112 of the base here, that's parallel to our axis, that's four inches times the height. Uh, six inches cubed, right? Its centroid, of course, is right at the overall centroid, so there's no plus 80 squared term they have to deal with. <clears throat> and so uh, four times six is 24, 24 divided by 12 is two, two times 36, the six squared that's left over would be 72. So we have 72 inches to the inch here times inch cubed, so that's inch to the fourth is the value of our i, right? The value of q then is going to be first moment of the area, right? Here's the area defined as going to the point of interest, the outer portion of it, right? And so that q sub b is going to be then that moment arm, well, the central distance of that rectangle to the neutral axis is going to be three minus half of the one, so two and a half inches, times this area, which is four inches y times one inches high, right? And that looks to me like two and a half times four. Well, two times four is eight, and a half, another half would be another two. So that would be 10 cubic inches for the q sub b. Right, so now we go and we can find our shear stress at B, toss of B, is equal to our VQ over I and the width. Right, so here that would be our 50 kips times our Q value of 10 cubic inches divided by our i, which is 72 inches to the fourth, and our width at that point, 
B is down here at this point right here, which is four inches. And let's check out the units. In the numerator, we have kip inches cubed over inches to the fifth. That would be kips per square inches. That's stress. That's good. We've done something good there. 50 times 10 is 500 divided by the four divided by the 72 will give us, when you put it into your calculator, a stress of 1.736 kips per square inch, which is about 1.7 uh, KSI. All right, so that's the shear stress at point B, one of the things we were asked to find. But now let's find out what the variation of the stress is over the, the whole cross section. Right now, we learned elsewhere that the variation of the stress in a rectangular segment is going to be parabolic. It's going to be zero on the outer edges. It's going to be maximum at the new, uh, neutral axis. And so that parabolic variation would look like that. Again, max at the mid height. We just found that a point B, which is three, uh, two inches up from the neutral axis here, that the stress value was the 1.736. Okay, it's not. We haven't calculated the total max yet, so let's go do that. All right, so let's go back. The I hasn't changed. What is going to change is the first moment of the rough associated area. So at the neutral axis, then what's going to happen is that our we're no longer talking about that location. We're now talking about all of this area outside of the neutral axis, right? So that's all of that area right there. Right now it's centroidal distance away from the from this point. Well it's three inches high, it's that rectangle, so that's a one and a half inches. Right? Still four inches wide here for that area times a height that's now going to be three inches. So that's four times three, that's twelve times one and a half. That's going to be 18 cubic inches. So that will change that number right there. Now, the 4 doesn't change, the 72 doesn't change, the 50 doesn't change, right? It's the same shear, same second moment of area for the whole thing. The 4 inches doesn't change because we're 4 inches wide across the entire height of this thing. And that will change then when we calculate that out, right? It's going to go up from what we had before. That was 10, now it's 18. So 18 divided by 10 is 1.8. It's gone up by 80%, right? That's the 0.8 part of that. And that will turn out to be a value of 3.13 KSI for the maximum. Right? And again, this is a second order variation or a parabola that we have going on here, right? Proven elsewhere, but um, we're just applying it right here. That's part A of this one. In part B, we'll look at a T cross-section and see how this basic parabolic variation will change.